Donald Trump is out, but he leaves behind as a legacy a broken system of media. Across four years of panics and manias, the press morphed into something grotesque. A new business model emerged. It grabs eyeballs with hyped up bombshell story after bombshell story, often based on nothing more than inference and anonymously sourced rumor. Brian Ross is reporting, Michael Flynn promised full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yes! Then just before the story falls apart, news outlets memory hole the old bombshell by moving on to the next one. Senator Al Franken facing allegations that uh, we have seen now a senator, number of Democratic senators almost simultaneously uh, out radio host Leanne Tweedin today saying me too. Call it bomb <laughs> hole. You've heard of a Ponzi scheme. You promise guaranteed returns using money from the new suckers to pay off the old ones and nobody ever finds out you were bankrupt all along. The bombshell era is a journalistic Ponzi scheme. You sell every scandal as the biggest ever. You stoke audience expectations with words like historic, unprecedented, treason, Watergate, concentration camp, Reichstag, and boom, you dismount into dramatic predictions before moving on to the next mania. Donald Trump has been a Russian intelligence asset since 1987. Congratulations, you just used new hype to pay off old editorial promises. A fascist movement fascist. on the rise. Trump is ancient history. Behind him, we created an unpopped speculative bubble of media errors. Week after week, we doubled down on noise and memory hold mistakes, turning the news into a single escalating mania. How? Technique number one was just to deny everything. Remember this? This has come from the highest levels of the Russian government, clearly from Putin himself, in an effort as 17 of our intelligence agencies have confirmed to influence our election. That 17 agencies line, it was everywhere. It was even fact-checked. But when you got 17 intelligence agencies agreeing on something. I used to be on the intelligence program. Seven months later, the former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, told Congress it was a hand-picked team from three agencies, not all 17. Two months later, the New York Times finally issued a correction. The paper turned around the next day and used the phrase unanimous conclusion of the United States intelligence agencies. This set the stage for PolitiFact's current conclusion, which comes full circle. PolitiFact says the original line by Clinton was true because it came from the office of the Director of National Intelligence, who speaks for the country's 17 federal intelligence agencies. Of course, it was the Director of National Intelligence who first corrected the number. Are you confused yet? Technique number two was just not to bother with the correction. Here's one big early bombshell sourced to intelligence officials. That story, citing a trove of information that the FBI is sifting through, raced around the world. Four months later, FBI Chief Jim Comey quietly told the Senate Intelligence Committee it was wrong. That report by the New York Times was not true. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, in the main, it was not true. The Times never retracted the story. You can still find it on the site with no mention of Comey's refutation. In fact, nobody's retracted it. Yes, you. Hey, uh, ABC News, I'd like to ask you about your big Russian pee, -pee party. No, no, I'm A third technique was selective disinterest. If there's an update that makes your first story look bad, you just don't do it. The pee tape was not only big news for years, it became pop culture gold. Steve Colbert even rented the pee chamber. Holy cow. That's the Kremlin. He's actually pointing at the Russian State Historical Museum, but whatever. That story even made it into a Showtime docudrama, which showed Russian prostitutes in an elevator on their way to the pee party. When the pee tape turned out to be a story told, quote, in jest over beers to a Russian-born Brookings Institution fellow who, no kidding, had been the subject of a counterintelligence investigation back in 2009, none of the outlets that spent years filling our heads with pee tales said a word. It was the same scenario with a dozen other scandals from the Trump era. From the Alpha server, to George Papadopoulos, to the Cambridge Analytica story, to Afghan bounties, even the Covington High School fiasco. 
If the follow-up made a story less sensational, reporters either doubled down or just ignored it. Or they just went for the silent edit. Why go through the humiliation of a correction when in the internet era, you can just change the text? Maybe a subtle tweak to a headline? Or change does to does not in a key place? Or you might report frightening evidence of nerve attacks in England one day, but later change it to something a little less serious. Lastly, if a story was so dumb, audiences wouldn't believe it even the first time around, you just say it was Russian disinformation. That last trick they pulled over and over and over. Even stories about Russian disinformation turned out to be Russian disinformation. Of course, conservative media had its own problems, beginning with Donald Trump himself, who when he wasn't getting his mouth duct taped by Twitter, was probably the single biggest source of wrong news on the planet during this time. But among the people who do this for a living, the bomb hold news cycle became the rule in the last four years. Just so we don't forget how crazy it got, we counted all the before and after shots. But of course we know that 1776 was the founding of this country. The project does not argue that 1776 was not the founding of the country. But what it does argue for is that we have largely uh, treated aspects to the American story as marginal to the American When you see something go to her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Why did you say that? If some of the central claims, allegations in the dossier have been corroborated.